Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to replace the brake pads, the rear brake pads on a 997.2 Turbo S with PCCBs, obviously. So uh, it's actually a pretty simple job, surprisingly, or not, I don't know. It, it's no different than I would say a lot of other <laughs> brake jobs out there. Replacing the pads is very simple. You're only gonna need a couple of things. Obviously, you need to get the car off the ground and remove the wheels. So I have a video for each of those things uh, separate from this. So if you don't know what you're doing there, go back, watch those videos, and then come back here. The only really tool you need to actually replace the pads on the rear calipers for the uh, PCCBs for 997.2 turbo uh, or 997.1 turbo, they're both the same regarding braking. So you just need a 10 millimeter hex ratchet bit Mine is on a 3 8 sized ratchet. And then you'll also need a torque wrench to retorque the caliper bolts. And then you also, it's recommended to replace them. They are allegedly torqued to yield. So I got replacement caliper, caliper bolts. There is two per side, so you're gonna need four bolts. And then obviously pads. So with PCCBs in particular, uh, you really only have one option and that's the OEM pad. There is a couple of aftermarket options out there. They're no cheaper, um, and maybe they're more oriented towards track use or whatever, but everyone pretty much recommends just using the OEM pad. Um, they're actually padged pads. So I will put the part number for the bolt and the pads on the screen. These actually have the padged P40-3 part number, um, but also the original manufacturer part number from Porsche as well. So. These were ordered direct from Delaware Porsche Parts, I believe is where I got them, and ordered them through there because they don't have sales tax. So I highly recommend that. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get started. So before you dive too deep and start taking things apart, make sure you have uh, a towel or something that you can cover the rotors with because we do have to remove the caliper and you don't want it banging around and, and hitting the rotor as you're working on it. So just make sure you have something to cover that with. Then also you can see here I have my stack of wood. That's what's gonna support the um, caliper once I take it off so it's not just dangling from the brake line. So before we remove the caliper at all, we need to remove both of our um, sensor lines here. So you want to pull this out of its fixture here and then the um, brake wear sensor from this fixture right here. That'll allow us to pull off the caliper and give us a little more slack. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is remove both of our caliper bolts. So there's one up on the top, one up on the bottom uh, the torque spec on these is 63 foot-pounds, so when you're done, you're going to want to retorque these to spec with the replacement bolts that we have to 63 foot-pounds. So we're just going to go ahead and remove these. You may also want to remove the wear sensor cable from the caliper here. Just give us a little more slack when we want to remove these sensors from the pads. Now I'm just gonna ease this off very carefully. Just like that. Come on. cover up my caliper here, or your, my rotor here. Now you could also just remove the rotors, but um, it's not 100% nece necessary unless you're gonna be reckless. So, just like that. You're also gonna wanna make sure you unplug your brake wear sensors. There's one on each pad. Um, easiest way that I was able to do it was to come at the bottom and just kind of pop them out with a screwdriver. Um, you can pull them from the top if you uh, have some replacements because if you do that you're likely going to break them so there's a few different ways to do it it's probably good just to have a extra set laying around because there's a good chance you're going to break them these are just plastic the way that they clip so 
Not a bad idea, they're super cheap. I don't have a set, I probably should have, um, but if I were to have broken them, I would have just replaced them anyway. So a couple ways to do that, just don't forget to try and, uh, <laughs> to try and get those out unscathed. So we're gonna wanna compress our pistons so that way our new pads can fit over the rotor. And if you have a piston compressor, then you can use that and do that. Otherwise, they are, you can do it by hand. I don't know if you can see that, or it, you just gotta give it uh, some juice. It'll take a few turns, because as you push one in, the other one's gonna wanna pop out, as you see. So just kinda go back and forth. You may also wanna pop the cap on your brake fluid reservoir, because you are compressing these more than they have been. So that could cause the fluid level to rise and overflow. So just maybe throw a rag around that in your, in your frunk. Now that we have all of our pistons fully compressed back into the caliper, we can put our new pads on there. So all these pads you need to do is uh, peel off this tape, but it's got an adhesive on the back here. So we're just gonna peel that off. And then we're gonna pop it on. Make sure the uh, wear sensors are out of the way. You can plug those in after the uh, pads are installed. So just make sure that those aren't gonna get in the way here of the pad, push them up, there we go. And then you're gonna wanna press these, the two pistons against this evenly and give it some pressure once this is in. So pop in the top, push it against the spring there. Come on. And just like that. And then we're gonna just give them a good squeeze, put some pressure on that pad there. Make sure it's facing the correct way, obviously. And do the same thing again. Whoa, that's backwards. There we go. Okay. Push that in there. And just like that. <sighs> yep. There we go. Okay. And then once these are in, you can plug your sensors back into the top of the caliper, or back into the top of each pad there. So now we're going to uncover our rotor and very carefully put the caliper back over the top and then just hand thread the bolts in to hold the caliper in place before we end up torquing it down. All right, so we've got all of our lines hooked back up in the back here, back into their fixtures. We've got our sensors reconnected to the pads and we've got our bolts in. Now we're just gonna torque them down to 63 foot pounds and that should be it. So that's really, it's as simple as that. So this is what the pads look like. I don't know when these were last replaced. I don't think that they're original, but they could be, I have no clue. I don't have the record of when these were replaced, but as you can see, this was the driver side pads in the rear, and then the passenger side. Obviously slightly more wear on the passenger side. You can see that the uh, these brass rivets are starting to show on the pad and the thickness is just below about the same thickness of the backing plate on the pad. So that's how I knew that these were time to go. Uh, they recommend replacing a 50% life. So I was definitely overdue. You can see some minor cracking occurring here as well and some tiny chip out on the corner. So these were definitely due, especially these outer pads. These are the ones that I was able to see. 
So clearly a little bit of uneven wear. You can see some cracking here as well. A little bit of uneven wear when you compare the inner and outer on the passenger side, as well as the inner and outer on the driver's side. So could potentially mean that those calipers are going to need a rebuild at some point here. Potentially the seals are dry. We're not fully retracting the pistons. Who's to say? Not entirely sure, but right now just going to run them like they are. And that's a problem we'll have to deal with uh, a little bit later. But yeah, so it's really as simple as that. I would say the hardest part of that was just getting the wear centers out without breaking them. But if you buy a separate set, that takes care of that problem. Otherwise, it's a really quick job, really easy. Make sure you don't, don't, this is an easy DIY. I would definitely recommend doing it at home. The pads were about 500 bucks. So yeah, they are really expensive. And then the bolts are about 10 bucks a piece or something like that. I'll put my, my invoice up on the screen as well as the part number so you know exactly what to buy for this. But uh, yeah, and the front calipers I think are, you know, the front pads are even easier. So I'll make a video on those when, when those come due. But that's all I have for this. So yeah, it takes longer to take off the wheels and get the car up than it does to actually swap out the pads. So pretty easy job. Uh, hopefully that helped you out. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.